Please rise out of respect for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord, beginning with verse 30. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, Jesus asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had, ar they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one that sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. As Pastor Jody told you during the announcements, this is Thank Offering Sunday, where we recognize the work of the women of this congregation, but this year we want to take it a, a step further, and we want to recognize the work of this entire congregation and the church-wide body as well. The work here in our community, the work in our country, and the work being done worldwide by many of you, and you may not even recognize the impact you have on our missions worldwide each week. I don't know how often you read the little commentary before the readings, but the commentary before the Mark reading is well worth hearing because it directly talks about being a servant, and that's what we'll talk about today. Jesus' teaching and action in this text are directed to the church whenever it is seduced by the world's definition of greatness, prestige, power, influence, and money. The antidote to such a concern for greatness is servanthood. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, being a servant, being the hands of Christ. We are beginning the message today with a short video. Where do the quilts go? What mother will receive this layette? Who will receive this school kit? How far will this health kit travel? The questions most often asked about Lutheran World Relief involve the final destination of LWR quilts and kits. The answers to these questions are as diverse as the many people with whom LWR works. Since 1945, Lutheran World Relief has distributed millions of quilts to people living in more than 100 countries around the world. From Angola to Zimbabwe, the list of destinations is long. Yet each quilt carries with it a unique message. A message of love fashioned by hands. A message of hope shared between hearts. Quilts, pencils, soap, needles and thread these ordinary things become extraordinary when they are shared as gifts with people in need. By sharing tools for better health and education, gifts of new hope and dignity are offered to thousands of women, children, and men throughout the world. It all begins in a church like yours. Quilting groups, Sunday school students, and volunteers, people committed to engaging their hearts and hands in action, begin to sew and assemble these precious materials of hope quilts and layettes, health kits, and school supplies. For those who participate in these LWR parish projects, the ministry starts at home. Quilters share their life's joys and sorrows with each other while they sew. Women's groups demonstrate for Sunday school youth the importance of sharing as they teach them how to assemble a health kit. These simple acts work together to accomplish great things. Faith put into action. 
As quilts and kits are completed in parishes throughout the U.S., they are delivered to one of LWR's warehouses. From in-gatherings hosted throughout the United States, local volunteers called Key Leaders coordinate a relief effort that touches millions of lives. As boxes of quilts and kits stream into LWR warehouses, they are unpacked, counted, and prepared for their long journey overseas. Kits and soap are repacked into cardboard cartons. Quilts are folded, stacked, compressed, and wrapped in plastic to protect them during their long journey. The quilts and kits your parish makes are designed to fit the real needs of communities. People displaced by natural disasters, children marginalized by conflict, and families debilitated by ongoing poverty. Quilts are a valued possession for people with little else to call their own. School kits may provide the only supplies for children left homeless by war or natural disasters. Health kits help refugees maintain personal hygiene while living in exile. Layettes warm and welcome a new baby and encourage new mothers. Sewing supplies help young men and women learn practical skills that they can use to earn an income. And a brand new bar of soap means dignity and cleanliness. Your gifts of hope send a clear message, a message of solidarity to those with little else to call their own, a statement of compassion to those who struggle against indifference. This is the story of your ordinary items, items which provide extraordinary care. Mali, like many countries in West Africa, is... I'd like to invite Becky Seibert and Jan Harris to join me this morning. I've invited these two ladies to join me for the message because they, ha they will enable us to have a much larger view of mission and ministry here in our community and worldwide. Becky has been eight times and planning her ninth trip to Tanzania for next year. So she's got a lot of experience with how she sees the very things that we do here at Grace used over in Tanzania. And Jan is very involved with the women here at Grace and Lutheran World Relief, and so she'll be able to give us an idea of how our hands are at work locally and in this country. So I want to start with Becky. Becky, how do you see the quilts, the school kits, and the layettes being used over in Africa. Well, I have a little story about that. You on? Um, on one of my early journeys, I made the trip up the mountain to a village called Lufu. It's a difficult place to reach. So the journey was long, and it was getting late when we got there. We were going to sleep in the pastor's house. The walls were made of mud. It did have a cement floor. The ceiling was about this high. I could touch it. And the ceiling was made of um, logs and twigs that were packed with mud. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, please don't let there be snakes up there. Well, I was a little anxious. I turned around and when I saw the bed that I would be sleeping in, there was a quilt, much like the quilts you see here. And then all of a sudden I felt fine because I knew the sew ladies had been there. We had a quilt. Also, a little story about the health kits. When we go, we take health kits with us. And because we have so many people come, there's not enough for everyone to receive a whole kit. So the pastors and evangelists take the kits apart so someone receives something, everybody receives one thing. The next day when we went back to the church to finish our cement floor, there was a little boy standing by the side of the church and he had a whole line of little boys with him. I'm thinking, oh, they're up to no good, I'm sure. So I went over to speak with them, and the little boy had a, received a nail clipper. And what he was doing was clipping everybody's nails. So you see, your things are well used, and they are distributed everywhere. And Jan, you have some examples of, of it being used right here. Right. Um we're um, good supporters of mission here in this church. Um, your donations that you bring in and put them in the doorways wherever um, are assembled and put into the kits that um, are displayed up here and some that Becky talked about. Um, the persons who help on project days have been the persons who put together the quilts that are displayed on the back of your um, pews. Um, and on Monday, tomorrow, we're actually going to have a packing day where we will take all the quilts 
that you're seeing here, and we will pack them away in boxes. We'll put together the kits, and they'll put in, be put in boxes too, and they will be prepared for shipping. And then someone from church, a good volunteer, I'm not sure who it'll be this time, but will um, take all our boxed items and deliver them to a regional center, and then they will be sent to Lutheran World Relief, where they will be um, put at a um, sorting station and delivered for delivery wherever the need happens to be. So your hands do lots of work that help others. And Jan, didn't you tell me that some of these quilts are even going to the Liberty Center? Right. Every now and then I'll stop by the Liberty Center to see how they are and what kind of needs they have. And they take our quilts periodically. And at this time, they've requested 12. And when a resident is finally able to be back on their own, they're, they're able to take the quilt with them. And the persons who work at the Liberty Center say that's very special to those residents when they get to take their blanket with them. So you can see how the work that these women have done all year preparing these quilts benefit not only worldwide, as in Africa, and locally, as at our own Liberty Center, but also in our country as well, because the quilts are also sent to areas that have been victims of natural disaster and used in those places as well. And as Jan said, they're going to be packing these quilts up tomorrow. Your first opportunity to help will be right after the worship service today, because we're going to need people to help fold them up and take them downstairs. I'll remind you about that at the end of the service. But then tomorrow they do need help from men and women packing the quilts. And Jan says it takes maybe an hour and a half to two hours. So if you're free tomorrow morning, please come and help them pack the, the quilts up so they can be sent around the world. But Becky, you spend a lot of time in Tanzania. What do you see as the greatest need there? I see, in my opinion, the greatest need, not only Tanzania, but worldwide, is education. Uh, along with the health kits, when they are distributed, they are, the people are educated as to how they use them. Uh, uh, God's Global Barnyard is another example where they're educated how to care for animals. An example of that is the toothpaste. We take toothpaste with us, and if you have never used toothpaste, you don't know what it is. You receive a tube, and maybe you think you're to eat it. So education is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take that so for granted and we don't realize they don't understand the use of something as simple and everyday to us as toothpaste. Jan, did you want to say something about um, education? I think education is very important here also. And we try to educate our whole congregation, including the youth, on um, the needs of others and show the different ways that they can help. Um, We've got our youth involved in several things here, and one of the things that um, I think it's Tricia, maybe Stacy also, they're having the youth make the blankets that you can do without sewing, the ones that are called tie blankets. I think there's one somewhere out in one of the pews, and I know there's one up here by the choir loft, um, that the kids have made. And so those blankets also will be packed up and sent to where they are needed, whether it be the Liberty Center or to our Lutheran World Relief. Yeah. So, they're being educated too and how we can help others. Yeah, that's wonderful that every generation understands. Becky, I know there are a lot of orphans in Tanzania because of war and HIV AIDS. There are many orphans. What happens to them? Most orphans or, or children without parents are cared for by family, extended family members in the village of Lufu. The high mortality rate are expectant mothers because they can't get down the mountain fast enough to receive medical care. So the grandparent or great-grandparents will raise that child. They're very community-oriented, and the village is in the bush. The whole village will care for the child, or if the parent has passed, the oldest child becomes the head of the family. Um, the churches also, every Friday, is Orphan and Widow's Day, where they are fed. Um, it's, it's very community community order. There are orphanages, mm -hmm. but mostly in the cities. Okay. Jan, did you want to speak to that? I, I think locally we, we try to meet the needs of all the dependent children that we run across. In our county there are fi uh, facilities and organizations or groups that offer assistance to those in need. We talked about it already today where we have the share and care. Um, we have the soup kitchen, we have a food pantry, um, we have the liter li Liberty Center, and of course through education we want to educate adults as well as children as to the resources that are available to them so that when they are in need there is something there for them. 
And the Village House would be another um, organization here in this community that reaches out and tries to assist families. And I am aware that over the past few months, though it doesn't serve necessarily orphans, but families, we now have Big Brothers Big Sisters in Sandusky County. So another opportunity for these young people who need a mentor, a role model, an example in their life for our congregation and this community to reach out in mission to these children. One of Becky's passions that has bled, if you will, into this congregation is her passion for water. And there's nothing, water wells in Africa, and there's nothing more heartbreaking. We've probably all seen the pictures of children drinking out of polluted rivers and streams. And so Becky, the, I know that we are trying to raise money to help build wells in Africa, but what does it cost to put a well in Africa? St. Peter's Blackberry, uh, Lutheran Church in Blackberry, raised over $40,000 to drill a well in Malinga. The cost depends a lot on location. Malinga is a remote village. So to get the equipment, the drilling rig, and all of that up there cost a lot of money. ELCA also contributed around $9,000 through their Wells for Water uh, organization. In Emzagoli, another village that I have been in, there is already a well. So to keep that water running, that windmill, it has a windmill now, which breaks. This village, when I first went there, the windmill wasn't working, so they had no water. The children were extremely dirty. They had scabies, they had lice. They were walking a mile to the riverbed and digging for water. When they brought that bucket of water back, if you had a choice, are you going to drink it or are you going to bathe in it? they were drinking it. Drinking. So our, our main focus now is to put a solar pump at that village. That cost about $20,000 because the sunshine's free. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you, you should know that your missions and outreach committee is very interested in providing more water wells and so we are distributing some of our money in that area. Also, we are in the process of becoming a companion parish with a congregation in Tanzania. We are moving toward that as part of our Vision 2025 that Pastor Jody has brought us toward more and more. And also, we are already supporting a missionary and have been for quite some time, Pastor Brandos in Mexico City. So your congregation is very involved in mission work. And something as simple and ordinary as toothpaste or water for you and I, or pencils. Becky, tell them the pencil story. It's powerful. On one of our, our journeys, we were passing out um, school supplies. And as I said, a lot of times when there are many, many people come, we open up that package so everyone receives something. And we were passing out pencils. A woman came forward and received a pencil and she was overjoyed, overjoyed to tears, which was very heartwarming. And then she turned around and she broke that pencil in half. We were thinking, why did she do that? In order to go to school there, you need to have a uniform, a pen pencil, and paper. And she looked at us and said, I have two children. Now they both can go to school. Pencils. Our pews are full of pencils and yet they mean so much to someone in Tanzania. Jan, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, just in closing, um, I want you to remember that we can always use your support in these missions and our Sunday bulletins and our Grace and Truth always post when there are project days. The times are usually there. Anyone is welcome. You don't have to be a woman. You can, anyone can help. Um, the items that we use to fill the kits, um, periodically you will find the information also in the Grace and Truth or the Bulletin, the times we're collecting different items. It doesn't have to be just those times that it's posted. You can donate any time. There's receptacles in all the doorways, I think, that you can place them in if you have something that you want to donate. And as a reminder, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock we will be um, preparing things for shipping and again anyone is welcome welcome there to help remember our hands were doing God's work absolutely and the challenge for the church today because you know I like to give you a challenge the challenge for the church today is continue to 
reach out to be the hands of Christ at work in the world in whatever way God has empowered you, whether it is with your time, your resources, or your talents. Bring those items in for the kits during the course of the year as you see them advertised. Bringing your food in and helping to support our food pantry here in Sandusky County, volunteering at one of the charities, helping on Love Your Neighbor Day. There's a multitude of opportunities because grace is very mission-minded. And I hope that we've helped expand your view of that today and educated you a little bit on how mission-minded we are here at Grace. The good news is, We've got everything we need to reach out in every way we need to reach out. God has provided right here in this congregation. All we have to do is willingly step up to be the hands of Christ at work in this community, in this country, and in the world at large. So ladies, thank you so much. Thank and you. would you please rise and join together for the hymn of the day. It's printed in your bulletin. Thank you.